ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda here of Psych, Defender of the Fatherland. We're off here to an exciting one versus one on uh, lo Crossroads, not Lost Glider, but Crossroads. Between the North, we got here tightrope fighting for the United States of America for the 4th Armored Division, tasked with clearing out this area, helped by German forces under command of Fortune. With elements of the Panzerlea Panzer Division. And we've got here Mechanized Assault, Ostrom, and Encirclement Doctrine with three multiples there available for Fortune versus Tightrope here with Tactical Support, Heavy Cavalry, and Rifle with Bulletins for Infantry and Grenades. Double Pioneer out here for Fortune now to quickly stop an infantry company, but at the same time means he doesn't have to spend a lot of time there. So, you know, not getting territory. I mean, he can overrule. Just push ahead a bit faster, they're also getting a bit more choices of where to defend and what not to defend. Not only also, in this case, he's spreading out his pioneers towards both fuel points, meaning depending on where tightrope focuses, he can still make easy progress towards one of the fuel points and then take it there. Oh, never mind. Seems like he's not quite going towards that one, but this one, it's fortunate for him. Tightrope is focusing on the western side of the map here with riflemen and clear echelon troops. We got some rifle in the east, but there we got any put over here, so it's going towards the eastern fuel point. Of course, this is one of the interesting things with this map, which is basically um, they're both of the fuel points here within easy range of either northern or southern player. They're not, you know, one is you know closer to the other base and the other in terms of points and distance. Is that actually what makes this map a bit more interesting? You sort of got a few more options in the opening, sort of to go for at the same time. You're not sort of heavily put off. You go for one fuel point or the other compared to some maps where there will be a definite advantage in one fuel point towards the other but also for example one point would be a lot easier to harass and frustrate the other player with so Grenadiers here following up for Fortune sending out there, MD42 covering here expecting an attack through there up north Pioneer spotting head there possibly doing a bit of reconnaissance there for Fortune to figure out well, where is tightrope actually what does he have and where does he have it in this case the Pioneers rapidly fall back going for the eastern fuel point this world they should be able to push that back rapidly with the Pioneers Grenadiers and of course an MD42 Rather than falling back there in the face of Fortune's attack, Pioneers hanging about there, perhaps waiting for something or something else going on there in Fortune's mind. Stand ready. Nothing further here for Tightrope as of yet. He's moving down the west over the right front. Pioneer or Rears moving towards the centre, but the Pioneers are waiting. And this one shows Rapid and the right in there, and we got Pioneers going to clear them out. Grenadiers back into cover. He's going to come going to need to move up. There we go. The M4 to support the Grenadiers. He'll keep the cover. So others gunned down. And there you go. Pioneers in the centre. Oh well. More Grenadiers there for Fortune. Grappling out in the open. But still. The Grenadiers have suffered quite a bit in the reverse of the right. But there you go. He actually ends up falling back here. Perhaps sensing there's an M4 to on the way. Either way, he is gone there. Pioneers occupying the house. It was long as possible until the German reinforcements can arrive. Grenadiers arriving. Got a motion. Then on the way for Fortune. A Granati there for. Tightrope, I think, is already taking up, and there you go. We do see the lieutenant. Interesting. Most players at the moment go for the captain, but uh, there's one going for the lieutenant. I've seen a slight increase in players actually recently going for the lieutenant. Actually, of course, more potent versus infantry. Of course, you don't quite just get double bazookas. Who knows? It might even be in preparation for the balance patch where the captain, of course, gets nerfed quite a bit. Sensibly so. And before to open up the right, the gun is joining as well. Pioneer's falling back. Heavy fire there, and there you go, rifleman through here. Pioneers in the fire, we got a flamme over there for Fortune. Just bit mortar arriving on the field, and we got tank up here for Fortune. Moving straight onto tier 2. And before 2 setting up at the same time, got rifle flanking. And these walls hold up, there we go. And it is holding up the rifle. And before 2 turns the rifle, there we go. Push back at the same time, Pioneers needs to flank the rifle occupied with a flamme there for a lot of action here. Rifle flanking in further, mortar being spotted as well here, giving it away. Lieutenant arrives there for him. Rough flanking past everything, being shot there with some support guard as well. Of course, the Canadians can't kind of anti case. In this case, Sartre has been to take quite a pasting. And ultimately, falls back there. Rifle right almost right up there. And could we see a wipe there? Could we see a wipe there? One man left to slip of health. Will Earl make it back home? Or will he die? Yes, he will. Entirely annihilated there. One squat loss here for Tight Rope in the early game. That's going to hurt. Of course, he does have the lieutenant, but he's going to have to get more replacements here. Put it mildly. Fierce was occupying the building, denying it, but even here we see Tight Rope quickly abandoning it. And we got Lux Megan that's coming up there for Fortune. And I'm there for moving up. And again, with three bullets in the factory, so the summer for more accurate auto fire versus just sort of general accuracy. Probably for the barrages. That's a bit interesting there. The enemy is attempting to steal and of course, our all three are different bulletins. You can't no longer stack them. 
to tell a man they're spotted we tell him to bring a hat there or at least a duplicate I mean if you can stack in theory but just not with the bulletins which is probably also why again he went for more grenade range now besides veterans and of course a bit of accuracy air half took on the way there for tightrope cut poke can also help deal with light vehicles and of course deal with a lot of other elements but after moving down the eastern side there Ambulance was with tightrope, no additional troops so far, no replacements. Turner there, moving about with this Thompson and his BAR, his Browning automatic rifle. Going there for the fuel point, and going for the western point here as well, slowly advancing. Not trying to engage Fortune so far, their strongest, a sensible approach there by tightrope. In particular, the soft lost his soft. Also, S mines here, guarding the flanks. Nice work there, also makes it a bit hard to rush some points there from certain angles. Good move, good move. Ladies and gentlemen, the Grenadiers have one carbine service the Grenadiers. Carnite Ks, they have like cover the Grenadiers do not, but they do have more powerful rifle. Of course, the 10th police direct report. There we go, rifle grenade and ah, oh, wipes rear shots. Another harsh loss for tightrope and a fourth armored here, but they there you go. A half trick with the double fifth comes to the rescue. Quickly guns down the Jurgen before he gets to fire off the pants. There we go, see, we see what? Will it be a wipe? Oh! Good, no, don't! Can he do it? Can he get the wipe there? Or will Fortune's last man survive? No! Got him! Damn close there, damn close. So tightrope got a bit of vengeance there for the loss of Suffolk. We also got S mines here. A lot of small patches of S mines here and there. Smoke going down there. On the spot. And nope, by the way, it's from Fortune. It's to prevent the A half check from firing at the MG42. That is actually the first time I've seen smoke being utilized like that to actually prevent the enemy from shooting at a target like that. Just impressive work there with Fortune, impressive work. Return falling back, A half to coming back as well there. Two two has arrived to help deal with the two to two just a bit. And if you can flank it, you can get it, otherwise the A half to give set up in the right manner. Can wreck a two to two pretty quickly. Fortune keying up his aggressive and bold tactics. More grenadiers. Not saying Panzer gonna deal here. Back at base, nothing further there. He could go for the 50 calibre, maybe an M20. Point is under something attack. else. Air half check almost done. Of course, more infantry would also work out nicely. And of course, so would doctrines. You could also consider weapon rank. He's got Our plenty of munitions. Throwing on Turn a bunch of BARs, for example, right now. Could give him a bit of pushback there versus Fortune. Squad, now to lay mines, and there goes the squad on the open to do this off a few hits with this auto cannon before the, the air half tech turns its guns on it. But overall, we're seeing tight rope here despite the rather precarious situation. He's actually controlling the fuel points here in most of the map, also the victory points. That we're gaining a bit of a lead there with Fortune. So, there's certainly a bit of a threat there versus Fortune. A half tech being fixed up again. And there we go, replacement rifle and light. At the same time, we also get a dog tank. It is heavy cavalry opening up for smoke. And of course, Rangers, combined arms, and the Pershing. Nothing there for Fortune. I'm getting caught here with the 2 2. There we go, bang up for Fortune. Values are two marching ahead. And it is important for the south. Free on the way there as well for the tightrope. Not going to compare stuff. Possibly also form it as an anti tank if he does go for weapon racks. We also got a captain out here, so he's going for the captain right away. No, he's fit for the major. Some players again like to do that. Particularly they are going for heavy cavalry, they'll just go lieutenant captain. Using the alphas there to provide support, also using the support weapons available from the respective buildings, and of course just playing out until the first Tight rope still in control, the Panzer Leia struggling a bit here. Hasn't quite been able to deliver some lasting blows, I suppose, and tight rope is quickly bouncing back from some of those harsher losses early on. Getting those kind of these wipes certainly all to an effect there on Fortune. Veteran to one here, Captain Wing Head Rifleman. To do it could be in trouble. He could try and use infantry. But there you go. Straight into the captain. Yeah, you have to call support guy in before you respond to just stop the captain very quickly. His tracks. Here's a sort of rifle moving up. Back to base, nothing further. There. We got a pack 40 on the way to the blue vehicles. Other uh, armor. And these are trying to flank against the air after they're getting caught out on the open net. They're taking heavy hits with the double 50 pelvis and also losing the gun. Captain there taking heavy mortar fire. Rifle flanking in. Straight to the Grenadines with black machine guns 2 to 2. And of course the mortar there slowly moving ahead. Air half to force to fall back. Tight drops assault here did not quite work out there against Fortune. And he had to see some grenades or something else. There might have been a better chance of working out. Oh, wiped again. 
Well, for that matter, you could have used some of the smoke here to at least, for example, cover off the two And then straight to minefield, lieutenant's unit suffers heavy losses. Nasty work there, troop enforcing to do get them in for a few extra hits. Tightrope is certainly having a rather rough first 10 minutes here. Though again, holding up most of the map. But loss wise again, it is harsh. And there you go, two two going up the A half deck. Can he get it? Or will? There you go, turns up, gun is going up. And there you go, A half track down. A staggering loss here to Tightrope. We're but now he's point. able to bring in the serious business there. He's got the weapon racks up finally. I'm surprised it took him so long. And can bring up the BARs. In this case, he's only single equipping. He's not Traps double equipping the weapon with BARs, line. which Trap allows you know, increase the firepower quite seriously. Or for that matter, the lieutenant or the reestrons. Still, that is an additional bunch of weaponry there. It's sort of further making it harder for the Germans to defend. They have Browning automatic rifles. World War One era weapon design, which was right support as they attacked across No Man's Land by being able to fire on the move. Promotion just came in. But on the other hand, did not have a very large magazine. I think it only held like something 20 rounds. Scott Car waiting orders. Mount being slightly spotted there. Nothing further back in Tyrell's was bound for fortune. We actually got another mort here. The odds got take up for two three. Good arrived. work, good work. Lieutenant, Captain, Rifle and all that moving out here. A capture point. Uh, again, he's got plenty of munitions and again he could benefit from some more weapons. Also here, more telemines there from Fortune. He's actually, oh, we also got mines there from Tightrope. Good work there. The good work. Telemines into the guard, uh, roads, making it hard for him to look about be light vehicles and flank. Oh, for that matter, react to anything here. In this case, it's actually a very good spot because it's right under tightrope snow. So players tend to be a lot more blind to mines there. They'll be noting actually he's very worried, it seems, about mines because he's got double mines for units there. So clearly, tightrope is worried about the possibility of fortune. That's really mining a lot of the maps, and certainly the S mines are quite a worry for tightrope's plans. They're going towards the west, but there you go, the teleman in this case is going to get spotted. And they charge the fortune to the flame for there. Go, mine went off. That was one of Tightrope's mines. That's less fortune. More loot troops bring in. There you go. Pioneers not trouble out in the open. In the south, two to three doing the candy with the reestrons. The mortars just blasting away. And Glenn is pioneers charging forwards. Nothing further so far from Tightrope. Got a bit of resources. No additional troops or anything. And there you go. Glenn is pushed back as well. Enemy 4 2 no longer there, of course. But it is stopping back. Got a massive push that captures strange the S mines! Almost from the entire unit. Also ruining the laundry. And there you go, MD4 top maneuvered mortar crew also in a lot of trouble here. Two just gonna have to move in. In this case the captain here would be the one with the soup says gonna be a bit of an advantage there for type of fortune. Not type rope obviously. And there you go, good mortar almost wants up the entire rough support there. And forcing right through the S mine for the cook seal work there. I know they managed to get through the bits that have all been cleared by the caption. And he's actually going for the heavy panzer call in a complete surprise of Fortune rushing for tier 4. Which is quite rare because most of the time it doesn't work. So I'm not really having a huge faith in this working out for Fortune. I mean he could have gone for the Zapoma call but not having up panzer force which I think could have done a lot of damage right now versus um, Tightrope, but then again, he's already being up the Sukas in the rear echelon, so who knows? Right. By the way, he's going overrun. for the tier 4. Will it be the he Panzer of Ephesus? Will it be the Strong Panzer? Will it be going for the Panther? Only I time will know. tell, though Fortune has yet to go for Doctrine here, alternating longer match, so no mid game analysis. Captain Reese is going up there, under fire from the Kennedy is because the light machine and give out. Getting a few nice hits there. Captain. MG42 gonna do this, moving up as well, just to almost fixed up with that very close fence into feet. And there you go, the heavy panzer call is now up for fortune and the panzer there, panzer to be shown. The enemy is taking our territory. Yes, yeah, so they're coming into the fire with MG42, trying to go for the mines, in fact, they seem to be right about there. Push up the eastern side, catching back 40, and it is something I've got the two rushing in as well to support here. And they get the lieutenant 
cutting down a significant part now of this ward's fire part and seeing them not flank any of the undergoat ears. And before it's not quite shut out, but not the troops bring in from here though. Not the biggest assault out here from Tiger at the moment, a bit limited. Smoke's been done, in fact he's gone for grenades of both weapon racks and grenades to be ready to see it from the American plane in most circumstances. They've got good suppress. Not enough time to hold an ultimate barrage, and there you go, full retreat. There's the pioneers, the mortars, and the two just keep striking down at them. Breaking up chat ropes assault there. We got the begins to bring up the bazooka. And there you go, nice hit. No veterans run for the reaction on troops. Back there for reinforcement and healing. More fire falling down again and again. Looks like he's just got one mines with one bazooka, though he can actually upgrade them with another bazooka if he wants to. But then again, he might be worried about adding too many, I guess. But again, you know, two bazookas would make the much more formidable anti tank teams. In fact, we get them in a cap to the six bazookas all in all, which can threaten most armor quite severely. And, uh, Dieter, how did he end up here? I, I don't know, Herr Sergeant. I tried to fix this. Oh, the weapon is now covered to tightrope. Good work there by Fortune. Two to two there being repaired again. Gotta push up the left side here with a lot of bazooka troops. But the main push is here in the east with the rifleman and the lieutenant. Still no double upgrade there for tightrope riflemen. Pony's been put back, capturing up. They got the Malta there, and for two, they're rocking it off. No worried, they might go in there, didn't. And another unit lost in this case, Reachelons have been taken out. They care, in fact, trying to cover up, cut the wire, they instead were hit by Malta. Malta crew there, but by the captain, possibly the one that wiped the Reachelons. And back at base, we got the Major on the way, so instead enough, he's going for all three tiers there, as the American. Interesting, interesting. They're going to get to go for the Sherman. The Fortune has not gone for the Panzerfan for Nautilus, going for a bit of resources there. I guess it's either the Strong Panzer or he's going for the Panther. Which case, if the Sherman acted, he's probably going to benefit from the Panther. And there you go, two to two, about to go down, two to two. Oh, no, gets away with the slim of help. Can he get it? There we go, the Lieutenant gets it. MU42 there. Push back as well, can he still moving ahead? Alone, squad to hold the front line, there's more reinforcements are prepared. No sign of Panzer Gunners yet there for Fortune, he's got plenty of manpower for it though, back at base here, Major ready, Rifleman ready. He didn't use the captain, he has been shooting him already. He's out of the field, but he pulls the batch, then rush up with Sherman, there it goes, Sherman tank on the way there, for tightrope and the full armor division. Gunners here just tearing into him, and a bazooka there dropped as well. You'll pick up the bazooka. No, you'll pick up the bazooka. I, I don't want to touch this American shite. What if I get fat? I don't think so, Sarge Vergi again. There you go, bazooka up for the pioneers. Sherman almost done. Don't need the captain to rush that Watch forwards, right I guess. And there you go, MD42 up for Fortune. Tank support is here. Sherman ready. Sherman ready to go. There we go, there we go. One medium tank out. Fortune still some time though. He's gonna be able to actually bring out surprisingly faster a Panther. But again, tight rope sort of three tiers rather means again his Sherman were delayed as well. Had he not, you know, say gone for the captain, just you know, focus on the lieutenant with more weapon racks earlier, you know. He could end up showing up much sooner here versus Fortune. So to certain extent, there's only way for Fortune right now because Tightrope pretty much just went every tier there was as the Americans. Mortify, they're doing some nasty hits on the new rifleman, bleeding them out quite a bit there. We have to think they can there to deal with the mortar crew, but uh, uh, well, there we go. He's got a nice kill there with the Suga close range. In this case, he's actually setting up to flank the Sherman here from the far side as well, while he makes up some assaults elsewhere. Then he's out in the open. Sherman comes up, Michael's run, there go, good hit. 50 cal volts to into the troops. There you go, almost wiped, almost wiped! There you go, come this court, wipe another loss there for the German army for Fortune to Panzerlehr. No sign of Panzerlehr yet. 
replacement grenadiers, just no punch grenadiers yet for Fortune. Or say Stormtroopers, he's got the manpower. He's got the, he needs to, well he doesn't have the manpower any longer. In fact, he's gone for the Panther. The Panzerkampfwagen 5. Pack out of the way for tightrope. And off of the German artillery, so he's going for some of his own. Telemann's going down there for tightrope, Captain Wing Westwood, Sherman pulling back there for repairs. To fix up the issues there. And house collapsed, just in case. Pioneers is going ahead, grabbing points there. Good work, tight review. I press there is fortune, denying him resources. He's still not, he still has a double up really, he's driving the BLs again, that would really benefit quite severely there. Versus fortune's infantry. Panther though, almost done. Also fortune is sure to keep holding on his upgrade over like machine guns. And there you go, Panzer Kampfwagenfund. Panther Panzer, holding up there for Deutschland. 80 millimeters of sloped frontal armor and I think 110 millimeters of armor there on the turret. Oh, how the, due to how the gun mantle would work in Act 10 and Nazi 10 to ricocheting the shots right into the tank itself, and specifically the ammunition rack, which is apparently placed right there as well. So they actually have to modify the man something with the chip just to sort of uh, minimize the chance of that actually happening. Machine going up, they catch a lot of trouble. There you go, push back. Panther opening up, almost got the machine gun as well. And certainly, a rubber with the Panther will force Tightrope to be a bit more careful with this tank. On the other hand, if you sort of catch the Panther in a bad position, he could wipe it. There you go, the few killed the Suka's flying at the Panther. Again, only one bazooka, I mean, the impact you can have there on the Panther. But it is coming as well. Panther just flying into the advanced right, and the Pioneer is swinging as well. Disposing himself to a bit of fire there to advance on the Panther, really trying to get some damage off the grenade off the gun of the ears. Ooh, cheeky one there, pack out of firing in, right from the falling back rear, so still trying to get off some pursuit. It's a close bit too there we go, penetrating hit on the front armor, but ultimately gone. Pack out of firing away there, anti taking away from the tight rope, looks like at this point he's not playing for the M26 Pershing. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Panther being fixed up. Telemines being late. Just been forcing, healing, and a tank and setting out. Fortune has made some progress here. Mortify on the pack out to try and silence the they're losing their cover and quite a bit of the health of the tank charging for the panther looks up with its main gun. There you go, gun is pushed away. Eastwards. Motor crew pushed away and before two, they're covering nicely very close to 53 there. Looks like he's preparing to flank with his panther there. He's certainly taking quite a circuitous road. Route. Driving down east, MD42 coming as well. In fact, we've got now two md 42 from Fortune. And he's certainly more out of infantry and also more map control there as a tight group's flanked. And there you go, Portland MD42 might even get crushed here, but the panther's not careful. Sockage in the centre, Pioneer's White Bazooka secured here by the Lieutenant. Big badness there for Tartrope. Does he have to capture the further upgrade? Nope. He's basically keeping one weapon on all units. No, say again, double bazookas and double VARs. And he's got tons of munitions, there's not really much reason not to go there. Panzer gonna be on the way for Fortune, some really infantry of some Panzer there. Pack out of fires. Panzer Grenadiers standing by. There he goes, straight to the tank, and shot bounces. And there you go, armor piercing discarding Sabo rounds. Good penetrating hit on the front line of the Panther. Certainly hurts the bit there, causing it to be more careful. Troops are hiding about here in the eastern flank, might try to push through here, try to flank, in fact. We'll have to see. Yes, there you go, double upgraded with the Zookas finally. Took him long enough, took him long enough. There we go, Captain Plank in, though we got an M40 already. Oh, of course, a good smoke. No, no, no! Colts on smoke! Yeah! I don't get why I want to put trying to catch the uh, M40 that we described as a big issue recently to pull back here. Captain, right front suppressed. There you go! Oh! Good lord! He's just running all over all the pinned troops! Complete and utter roadkill. Gaining veterans he won! 
That's not very often you see that, that's for sure. That is you know, an entire pink unit getting crushed by a tank. Punch goes there, I mean. Just try and save the day. Mortis continue to fire. We got one bitch in three, one bitch in two, 13 and 14 kills. Rafnir looks needs to be careful. They can easily be sent around for too long now. Wiped out there. Punch was a single officer from the lieutenant. All the firepower he can bring to bear to the table is rather making things more difficult for some punch. And there we go. Get back to Oh! I guess that was a misclick. I was planning to try and bait them into it, didn't he, in the mind? No. Oh, wait, Panther there, almost fixed up again. Good to go, Sherman's heading out. He's got the fuel, he's got the command point, he just needs the manpower now to call up the Pershing to fit the Panther being more correct. Now go engaging the anti tank gun crew, the machine guns and main gun. Highest pressure shells in the world due to the fact that the higher velocity gun makes there's more pressure on the shells themselves. And in the case of the highest pressure shells, it needs to be a thicker casing, otherwise, they'll just fall apart from the air. And then the just fall back to the highest pressure there. Little front back. Panther will pick up on his back. Takes a nasty hit there from the anti tank gun, less than half health again, but halfway to Venture 2 2. Also, nine kills there for Das Vaterland. Deutschland. He's working on it. Fun fact about the Panther is he was actually very unreliable mechanically and required a lot of maintenance. Even then, he could still break down. And it was not common to say, you know, half a unit simply be out. He needs repairs at all times, so sort of fighting and such. It's a little fun fact there, a little fun fact. In fact, the King Tiger was more mechanically reliable than the Panther. We're even talking the later models of Panther. The, the enemy still A model and the G points. model. We are losing the so sector! Fact there, what do you mean? Pack out of veterans were there, no sign of white phosphorus though. Panther doing what he can there. And we got a Panther over here, 4 2 Nazi Storm Panther on another Panther. Actually goes for the Panther there for. Interesting decision there by Fortune. I mean, a double Panther really would just give it. In the advantage versus the armor, but also pretty much precluded the Tiger from doing anything with the Pershing tank. Panther quickly falling back here. Panther tank falls on the ground. There you go, Rafa. Nope, still only. Oh, that would be ours. There you go, finally. Veteran the three, there you go. Quickly push back. Pack out and next to hit as well. Then the Panther going to be there. Panther with a bit of counter support here. Quick harass from the west up, let's put the off here with the Sherman. Six kills, Venture 2 1. There we go, half the gun of these will go on with the There we go, mine wipes out the other half. Size of the for Fortune is yet to still choose a doctor. Mills, half an hour into the game, he's yet to choose something here. M42 continues to guard here. Most of the fighting seems to fall around here, and here the western side isn't really seeing much action because well, Fortune's focusing here and tightropes, well, also focusing in the response, and he's not seeing trying to put some flank in for here much at all. Rather, sort of continues attacking Fortune head on, but there he goes, helping some hits on the Panther. Close to Vincent T2, and there you go, Panther there for fires, close to barrage. Picking up a lot of dust, and the point of the base of units. That didn't do much. I mean, next stuff, but you know, no actual serious damage there. The tightrope or the fourth armored. Crew ready. Panther pulling back for Panther pulling back for a load. Prepare for another barrage. There you go, Lieutenant flanking in. There you go. A bit more flanking from Tiger, I think, would benefit him quite nicely. Maybe we'll use his abilities a bit more. Maybe calling in some rangers, but you know, for example. A bit of combined arms with the Sherman would definitely make for a good push. Panther tank and holding back. Almost went one. There you go. He can finally call the in the M26 Pershing heavy tank. You have a rocket Which was also actually quite mechanically unreliable. That sense having a bit the same issues as the Panther tank. There you go. Central six pushing out. Rolling ahead. 
capture point is under attack. Tram engaging the grenadier. Hack out of mark line down. So how will we make use of this person there with the teacher up rounds? Here's a fun thing. Pershing tanks, in fact, tanks in general, did not get access to HVAP rounds. They were pretty much because they couldn't make that many, or didn't get around to make that many. Last, through the tank destroyer units, means anti tank guns and, you know, mobile tank destroyers. But tanks and Pershing, just like that. Not really. It's a little fun fact there, a little fun fact there. Brown and Brown have been doing fun there, got another patch of the barrage. Got the Chalice Pit, which he destroys some Armory Khan, and there we go, gets also hits. Panther goes in the two to ten fighting for some punts are going to deal with two best assault Americans. Pershing, Sherman finding the move, but splitting up here. Then he's in a bit on top of the Sherman, ten kills there. And straight into Telemine, taking the Pershing down to half health and a heavy engine damage, and just regular engine damage. Rather bad news there for Child Rope. At least didn't get heavy engine damage, otherwise there might be a chance the Panther could have hopped it down and knocked it out. But I guess in this case, Fortune was quite aware of it happening, otherwise he might actually just try and blitz in the Panther to knock it out. So Sherman Pershing here, Tiger could probably follow up with a Jackson here to help versus the Tiger, for example, or he could go, of course, for another Sherman. Or maybe a Scott. I mean, overall, more armor here versus Fortune would be good. Again, if he goes for the Panther, for example, I mean, the German armor's probably going to need not so much in armor, so large numbers of tanks, for example, can rather hurt the German player. Goes for Panthers, which is in game a slow rate of fire than in the actual war, he actually had a high rate of fire compared to the Pershing due to a lot of the lighter rounds. No fun fact there. Panther, though, very close to Fetching 2 there, very close to Fetching 2 rifle sitting out there. Pershing and Sherman there being repaired. We got a ranger here now calling up some elite light infantry there. Mr. Tightrope ready to attack the Germans head on the Krauts. Roughing up the west side with Pershing in support there. No Thompson over there for the rangers. In fact, he's got a ton of munitions. He could easily get our way with using some uh, combined arms here and there, which basically buffs both the vehicles and the infantry as long as they work together. And they're quite some size of the is there, to be honest. Punching them in the air swiftly, holding by the Pershing and the Roughing combo. Pack out of fire going down the pants left, shooting up, getting an anti tank gun, almost the pack out as well. Let's give them help, boys! Lots of swift brutal action there. Our opponents are seizing a sector. Tightrope in the defense now versus Fortune here. There you go, Panther over the head, machine guns planting away. And we follow two there, Benjamin 3 supporting there, going to take off the And there we go, Benjamin 2 for the Panther, Benjamin 2. Increased armor and increased health. We got a smoke screen down here on the MD42, but also allows the Panther to get away. Get that fixed up. Standing by. Shoots in here. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Fixing up the Panther. Armor ready. Channel Legend 1, of course, now close to the Pershing, of course, gets access to Radionet, increasing line overrun. of sight, but also rate of fire. Splits them up. Panzer here. Also, as you come to the upgrading his ranges, nope, an additional PAL bazooka, since again they have access to both the number of machine guns and an additional weapon. There you go, Pedro goes in for the Panther, go take hits there. Super Sons Blind Sherman hits me too. Pioneers in the center here, Rifleman continues to think about that bit, because Jalil is holding up as well. Scrounging in between the Panzer there and the 4th Armoured. There we go, the attacking force straight into the gun. the light machine gun just blazing away. Quick grenade there, forcing away. But then the machine pushing sets out here in the east. And you follow two Panzer never leaves stops. A pretty heavy assault there from Tightrope. There's an engage there, go Panther opens up as well. Got to get Panther Pops there, go damaged engine. A bit risky there with this. Uh, Pershing, Sherman being repaired, there you go, go straight for the Pershing, go straight for it, no way in the end, just walking up, down to tank and firing there. No h rep round in time here against the Panther, he's going to lose that Pershing, unless he gets really lucky, we've got a smoke screen down here, stunned. And no luck there, Panther gets it, Pershing kaput. 
stunned around there, the heat round from pack 40 circuit there to check in the end. There goes Sherman. This you know, in a quarter of health there, being attacked, cursing it and tank it. Cursing Panther he misses. And tank it hits though. Penetrating it there. Pack out to get some good hit as well there. Per Panther continues to go after the Sherman there. And there go the actually got combined arms, increasing range of the Sherman, but also buffing the arm of the infantry as long as they took down the arm. So that's actually surprisingly potent ability, but I'm surprised more players aren't using it. I mean, this is a bit tricky to pull off, but if you use it properly again, it does mean your men and your tanks become notably better. Just a massive wave of assault here from the tight rope. Master Levy put back, taking heavy down from the top. 10 into the last screen to blind the firepower there. It's mostly done against him, Floyd 2. Sherman being fixed. He can all actually go for a person reasonably soon. He just needs the manpower. Sherman ready to repair that one up. So does the Panther, that one's almost been knocked out as well, but that he's very close to Veteran 3. Not very often you get to see a Valmark Panther hit Veteran 3 in a 1 versus 1, to be honest. So Veteran to see if it hits it. Destroyed an anti tank, tank down, down, pack down. Yeah. And sort of this shooting the reaction on some bits as the cross force and others supposed to be in there. And there go pushed away. Looks like Fortune Center is actually breaking off a bit here in the face of tight ropes and it's all pack. So that fires up close here. While the Rangers just continue their ceaseless assault here, catching the mortar crew with their Thomas up machine is just going them down. Could you up there, could you wipe? Will he get it? No, they get away just... Oh, no, he got them. He got them. He wiped it right at the uh, entrance of the base. I mean, he can easily recruit it, but it's not going to be Veteran 3 anymore, which is certainly going to have quite an effect there for Tightrope. Still no Dogs and Fortune. We're almost 40 minutes into the game here. 40 minutes and he's yet to choose anything. I mean, right now, you could go for encirclement, try and pull off a close to the pocket, for example. This is the break supply line. Break, he's got a ton of fuel as well here. He needs to probably bring out another Panther now. He would go for Stormtrooper, the Assault Rifle. There's a lot of options there, really, with this Doctrine for Fortune, really. Considering yeah, he's got a lot of fuel and a lot of munitions. So, I mean, this one will really just take advantage of both of those sort of really just hammer tightrope quite badly. I mean, even he doesn't try and, you know, actually go for the full effect of close the pocket, he just uses it to provide artillery support around the frontline sectors. Sherman's heading up on the right-hand side. Big push there go Barrage from back out. Punch it in the last one. You'll hear the remnants of the edges there. Chain to the lieutenant and the rifleman. Swift stalled. Panther moving up on the west side now there. We also got two telemines here by the way at the west base entrance. He's clearly worried about someone rushing his base there. And perhaps trying to get his panther on the something else. So far, Tiger has yet to do that. The Suka flies at the side of the Panther, bounces off. Grenade against the mortar crew. Almost, almost. Had a retreat, they probably would have lost it. Let me this one, just tap on this. Charging through, let's change the enemy point two. Shamming up the eastern side here, pushing back troops there. No smoke screen there from Tiger And we got Blitzkrieg here to allow the Panther move to do with the Sherman. Sherman needs to get away, they almost got the enemy point two. Continued up, he got smoke there on the end of the to release nearby the Sherman off the there go. Free hit on the Panther. Sherman there very close to the flee. Next shot misses. Panther almost lets him flee itself. Complete out of case here. Panther gonna be about to get what we gotta get by the landing off. Small kill there and there you go. Panther gonna lose white fortune has suffered staggering infantry losses now. Whereas tightrope still got plenty of troops to push through with. I mean the only thing he's got here is the Panther. That's not going to sort a full infantry assault there, so Fortune Tech's in a bit of trouble now. He needs to bring out something here. Stormtroopers will be one option of quickly bring the troops to the field, as opposed to there's also mechanized assault with a tiger or something like that. I mean, that certainly helps us the infantry a bit. Tight rope still not going to second. Pershing, or the man are being there, so not doing any favors. Well, they're repairing the support weapons. Another sort of prepared there by Tight Rope, Anti Tank hanging about there, and Sherman almost good to go. More 
or pioneers of fortune. And again, it's very much accurate, which is the major league from two cents he's got over the other zone. Well, good hit with shots. Rather stalls in advance. In front of the back end, it's in the back end, but the next flank from the other side. Haven't even a cannon or seen gun main gun. Suki hits that grenade off on the MD42. Wipes the entirety, vets with the free MD42. Gone just like that. The Zuka team then advances further four step. Panther reaches Vets with the free, finally increasing his rate of fire and his mobility. Shots bouncing off that. Lieutenant moving up there, Pack 40 about to go wipe this one, logical pushed away. And there you go, Pack 40 down there you go, in desperation, guarded. Tiger called up there for Fortune, the Panther never zooms there, almost now taking down the Panther. We have to try and go for combined arms right now, that boosts the troops a lot there. Also, it's Sherman giving them more range, but there you go, Tiger comes out instead. No combined arms, range is just recovering. And he's back there, going calling the Pershing, called in. Second Pershing there for Tiger. There you go, range is pushed away, they're going to have to take high velocity on this round, so they can just save rounds there. Sherman moving up, there goes, shots penetrate, benching the fee on the Sherman, another hit there. We lost a gun crew. Another penetrating hit for the Sherman, and there you go, we got the person here by increasing the trade of fire, we got a smoke screen down there, preventing the grenadiers from seeing anything, damage in still goes off, but there you go. Tiger down, Tiger down. Panther moves into the smoke there, shots flying all over the place, smoke, mortar rounds. Use the atrium round there, by to finish off the Tiger. And hit the person there, of course, oh, the Panther in the smoke there. Could, of course, possibly finish that off. There you go, pushing them back, pushing them back there with the Panther. Pioneer Storm is getting wiped out there as he charged forward, spotting for the Panther. There you go, penetrating hit. Panther almost done, Pershing sets ahead. Sherman pulling back for repairs, 20 kills. Just reinforcing healing, needs to get going. Need to pull back that Panther there for. Now might be a need to try and go for another Panther instead of a Tiger here. Panther misses, but there you go, goes after the Panther there. He drove it away from everything else, and there you go, Veteran to one, halfway 22. Panther blitzes in, gets a good rear hit there on the Pershing. Tries to move about here, force the turn to turn about, there's a boost keeper tank there in the rear, there you go, work, work, almost got it, Panther with a sliver of health, sliver of health, can he do it, can he do it, gets away, just, damn close, he's really pushing his luck there, there's the tight ropes, uh, Pershing, and he even made one mistake there, that could have been that Pershing, or oh, Panther in flames, but he did it, he forced the person there to the further move his head for a longer period of time, Sherman though, is almost good to go, Troops pushing forward, so there's machine guns secure. Pack Ford has been wrecked. A lot of infantry not left there for fortune. We are losing a sector. Panther being a pet there. 15 kills for the Svartalan, and there you go, and Ford's reporting with Lieutenant and swiftly dispatched. Almost ready to join that Pershing. Troops are reinforcing. Need to get them up and moving though. Tiger up, forwards, forwards. And there you go, Stuggy for Fortune. Rather rare to see one being called in this late. Rough being caught out of the MD42 needs to pull back. And there you go, Rough grenade. It's going to be too late. Annihilated. We lost a gun that was a bit of waste there for Tightrope. Sherman good to go. Person who's seen repairs, you could pull in some more reactions to speed up the process. That might be bad. And there you go. Panther sets forwards. Sure, moving up here to support the lieutenant. Stuggy, Panther going in. Person almost mixed up though. Shot bounces, shot bounces. Panther shot on the island, just not there. Go another shot failing to penetrate the front line of the Panther. Another hit there. Sherman down to half health. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Now the shot bounces. Now the excellent hit from the Panther. In fact, the Panther had apparently very good accuracy due to the high velocity of the gun. And he had very little sort of um, arcing, whatever you call it there. At most ranges until it went beyond two kilometers, something like that. Oh, interesting detail there as well. Send your order. Stock ready. Armor 
here. Ready for orders. Wrecking the Indy 42, can't grab it, it seems. S-Mart's going down to defend the Eastern Victory. Put, put, work, work. And to tank and they recruit. Pack out trying to silence the stronger shots. And again, apart from the he should go for an anti tank and they should go for Jackson or another. She should get something a bit more armor here, a little bit more speed as well. And keep up the pace. And certainly Jackson would provide him with some much more needed punch. There was the Panther and Tim gets a Vets into one. In which case, you know, there's Italy's going to run. does just buff the penetration, but also damage. Telemar Nebo is still unspotted. German Persian made for battle here, but he's not putting in Nebo's fortune. Perhaps putting him to make some opening there. And to tank, it's coming in quite nice to the rear of the tank. There you go, Persian flanks in. Almost 52. Almost wiped the pioneers, but quite there. More time to fire next. Panther, strongly moving in ring. He's rifling under heavy fire. There you go, Panther gets up next to him. Nebo's the side arm of the Persian. Passion shoots back, misses. Panther goes in for another excellent hit there against the Pershing. Over again, the five minutes rather sitting so far in the center of the map here. Gets a kill on the Rangers board. Another kill there, 17 kills. Chart drops still got plenty of minis. Again, combined arms would benefit him. Again, more range, Central other orders. benefits there. Sherman, Line of sight. And infantry just gets large and benefit. Really. There goes Sherman versus Stuggy. Stuggy does not stand much of a chance there. Good in the Sherman there. Still no more armor. He can call off Sherman, I think. And again, Jackson. We turn out to treat the Pioneer before too far here. Overall time of the gun. There you go. Let's pull off the H trap round there. Curse. Oh, Pank almost out. H trap, H trap it, H trap it. Oh, yes, you know. Combined arms, but no. Panther blitz away with the damage engine. Pershing goes in there to tank and shoots bombs. It's off there. Stuggy firing. And to tank is firing there as well. Good hit there. Good hit. Let's focus the Panther. Focus the Panther. And there you go. Target weak points. Prevents him from shooting. Pursuit is off. Got the Stuggy. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. Sherman not moving. Oh, it's going with the half health now. Never mind. He's charging in. He wants the Panther. He wants it no matter what. There you go. M1 gets the Sherman, lighting it up there. Panther's still alive. Had he just used his abilities a bit, combined arms or the h trap round, that Panther probably would have been dead there. That Panther would have been dead. Instead, he's lost his Pershing and his Sherman. He suffered some quite catastrophic losses there. As Fortune just still has a Panther. Mention the three. A very rare sight, I would say, in the current meta game. This much going up to cover the flank there, also versus officer's dead. There's on the major left here. Not in danger surprise. Point is under attack. But it is out in the upper springs and the rifleman. And to tank that's active and exposed. Panther yet to be repaired, and there you go calling up another tiger. I think Tyra was trying to go for a third version here. So it seems, so he's yet to call it in. But of course, now he's going to face golf against eventually the Fleet Panther and a Tiger. And there you go, third Pershing out here for Tyra and the fourth Armored Division. somewhere I think north of Cologne after the base sort of went through and round I think no part of the armor then set off the munitions there the tank actually survived that one the tank did not though a little fun right there grenade on the Indy 42 almost wipes it out more firing down the weapon as well there 22 kills quite good there Rifles on being charged into the time. There you go, Pershing moves in. The ticket is for the mines. Pack 40 is on there. Panther, good to go again. Sets out for this fast line. Three armor kills. 16 infantry kills. Pershing taking quite heavy damage. And there you go, blitzing ahead. Goes after the Pershing. And gets it. 
with that, Tightrope surrenders, his spirit broken and his tanks broken by Fortune and his Panther, amongst other things here. And this week, fighting part because, well, it's, you know, one of the first times in months I've seen a Panther Rush actually work there for the Wehrmacht. If not years. I mean, very rarely in the one versus one will that work at all. It's simply such a resource investment, but it seems to work here for Fortune. Partly, of course, a good play, but overall, again, in part of this case, it also took to somewhat tightrope going for every f f tier. Had he not there, again, he could have armor up sooner, threatened Fortune more, and again, the Panther might have had a hard time finding any traction. It didn't, hurt, you know, hurt Fortune either. That tightrope just went for one shell and one pershing, never brought him any more armor. And there's certainly lots of bit of issues there were using his abilities at times. Again, had tightrope, I think, been sharper with his ability use as well there, he probably could have knocked out that Panther at several junctures. In that case, Fortune would have been a much... A uh, weaker position. Uh, Fortune would also benefit from a doctrine much sooner. And possibly a second Panther. The Panther ever didn't do as much there, so a second Panther possibly working with that one, I think, could have much more impact there versus Tightrope as well. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed this fight. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gives you news for matches. If it did, one subscribe to a friend, share it with everyone. If not, send in replay and provide some feedback in the comment section. And this is Imperial Engine. Cheers. Thank you all for watching. Hope to you all tomorrow for another exciting episode. Bye.